Previously on Games Computers Play. I have written a Wordle simulator. Well, let's say that's good enough. Maybe there's some completely new genius approach I'm totally missing. Couple of ideas from the top of my head. Hello and welcome to Games Computers Play. This is the second and probably final Wordle video in which I try to find the perfect Wordle algorithm. Will I reach 100% win rate? Will I get the best possible average? We'll see. Let's go. Let me bring you up to speed real quick. So, last time I tried to write a Wordle bot and I implemented a very basic strategy where I just filter potential list of words by green, yellow and grey results. This naive bot reached an 89 winning rate or 1 in 9 fail rate. I also implemented a slightly more advanced algorithm that, instead of choosing random words from the list, would pick a word with the most popular letters. This one got as high as 96.5 success rate, and this is where we left things. What can I say? Looking back, that stuff was pretty basic. So thank you for sparing my feelings and not saying it right to my face. Also, thank you all for your suggestions and ideas about how to implement a better version of Wordle Solver. With your help, I did make some improvements. But before we move on, let's address some of the glaring issues. If you play Wordle a lot, you might have come up face to face with the issue of double letters. What does Wordle do when there are two letters in your guess, but only one in the secret word? Here's an example. Let's say your guess is books and the secret word is cover. First O is in place, so green. As for the second one, there is O in the word, but in another place, so yellow, right? Wrong. In this case, it will be gray. Turns out the game distinguishes between first letter and second letter, or to be more exact, between one letter and another letter, and this was not how my program treated it. But I will not call it a bug. And this is why, if you look at the rules, the way they are written, there are no exceptions, no fine print, no secret clauses, nothing that says these rules do not apply to the second letter in the word. I trusted those rules. Interestingly, when I discussed this subject with my wife, she had exactly the opposite idea. Of course the second letter should be grey. What color do you think it should be? It would have been super duper confusing if it wasn't, said she. Anyway, long story short, I fixed the logic, it had no noticeable effect on the result, although a real pain in the neck to debug. The first naive version of the algorithm had some random element in it. The result may be different each time it plays, even if the secret word is the same. The improved version of the algorithm was deterministic, meaning it played exactly the same with the same secret words. So yeah, you're right, I didn't have to run it for 1 million times or so. If you test it for 2350 times, that should be enough. So accept it, correct. In this video, we'll test everything for exactly 2315 times and not a single run more. Wordle is not what it used to be. No, I'm serious. Since the New York Times bought it, and I'm very happy for Josh Wordle for selling it, New York Times did remove a few words from both the secret words and from the acceptable words lists. Words removed from the acceptable words list are mostly slurs, and to be honest, I had to look up probably half of those. So thank you for the educational moment, I guess. As for the secret words list, six words were removed. Slave and Lynch. And I get it, given the Wordle is a popular office game, these words would probably have caused some awkward conversation at the water cooler. Another word is the word wench. I don't know, I like this word. It's very colorful, very rich. It's all over ice and fire books. But okay, I get it. Depending on the context, it may be a bit unsafe. Remaining three on the chopping block are quite baffling. Agora? Pupal? And fiber? Why fiber? Were they cleansing the words they couldn't digest? Anyway, I'm going to use the original, the vanilla list of words. I'm simply going to ignore these changes. They most probably don't affect numbers in any significant way anyway. 
I promise we're getting to the algorithm in a minute. One last thing. The result is very much dependent on what game you are playing, that is, what you allow your algorithm to know and to do. So let's review the limitations, and so you'll know, we'll get rid of all of them by the end of the video. So these are the rules I was working off of. The solver does not know about the list of 2315 possible answers. It thinks any of the 13,000 possible words are equally likely. It uses hard mode, meaning you have to use the letters you have uncovered, and it has to take reasonably short time to come up with an answer. That is, no long pre-computations, each game should be shorter than a second, ideally we should have several games simulated in one second. And as I said, we will relax these rules in a short while and see what effect that will have, but for now, let's stick with them. Now, let the improvements begin, bring in the suggestion number one. Some of you guys pointed out, quite correctly, that we still have one more piece of information that I was missing. Letter order. This is how it works. Let's say we have a set of potential words we want to choose the guess from, and we know there are, say, 10 letters S in the list. We apply this weight to the words containing S. But what if we knew that of 10 S's we have 2 in the position 1, 1 in the position 2, and, say, the remaining 7 are in the last place. Surely it would make any guess with S in the end more potentially successful than ones with S in any other spot, right? To make it work, we just keep five separate letter counts for each letter position. It's actually quite interesting to see how the letters are distributed through different places in the word. Here you can see the most popular letters in different places and the most popular places for different letters. Now let's test this one. The performance indeed improved. Not by a lot though, 0.7 percentage points, bringing the total success rate to about 97.2. One in 36 fails. By the way, the best word according to this version is cares. Anyways, I feel that's the best I can do with current limitations, so let's relax one of these rules. No more hard mode. Welcome to the easy mode. Quite a few of you guys suggested that sticking to green letters is a waste of valuable space. We're not gaining any new information, but we could have. Instead of fixating on whatever correct letters we found, we should let it go and use the freed space to test other letters and find if they're grey or yellow. Now let's see how it can be implemented. It actually wasn't trivial like the methods we had so far, and there was a fair bit of throwing spaghetti and seeing what actually improves the result. What I'm about to present may look a little weird, but it's the best version that I could come up with after multiple trials and errors. To show how it's implemented, here's a bit of what's going on under the hood. Internally, when the program guesses the word, it keeps track of remaining letters in a form of a mask, a list of possible letters for each of the position in the word. The mask is updated every turn. As you keep guessing new words, your mask gets smaller and smaller until finally, and hopefully, it shrinks to one letter per column. Now, what sometimes happens is you get all greens in four columns and quite a few options in the remaining unsolved column. Then you have to basically test them one by one, and in doing so, you'd quickly run out of attempts and lose. Now, let's prevent this from happening by reusing those green columns. 
Here's the plan. Whenever you have one or more solved letters, do this. Find all unsolved columns, mix together all remaining letters. This is going to be our new mask. Find all the green letters you had so far and create an anti-mask. We don't want to reuse those green letters even accidentally. Finally, find a word that fits those new mask and anti-mask. Using these rules gives us another 0.9 of success rate and we are now at 98.1, 1 in 53 fail rate. The problem with this approach is that sometimes we end up having just a bunch of consonants and it's not easy to create a word using only consonants. There are some only consonant words that Wordle would accept and there are exactly five of them. Kruth. 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 Girl and girls. And of course, phthft. phpht. And it's a bit of a long shot that we have exactly the letters for these. So, next improvement sprinkle our letter list with vowels A, I, E, and O. This way, the performance is now at 98.8%, 1 in 83 fail. Final improvement let's prioritize words with the maximum number of letters from the original list. Let's see how this final version would perform. This final improvement raises the win rate one last time to 99.6%. The program would fail with only 10 words out of the whole 2315 dictionary. 1 in 230 fail rate. And this is the highest I got under these limitations. Now for the final bit. Let's destroy the wordle as we know it. Up until now the solver was a sort of a universal solver for a Wordle-style game. It didn't know the actual list of guess words and would try to make it play pretty much in real time. What if we want to create a super optimized solver for this particular Wordle, with this particular set of 2315 secret words? What if we remove any limitations, especially the time constraint? Well, within reason, of course, I still have plans until the heat death of the universe, but let's say a few hours can be an acceptable time to have the program searching for the strategy. This idea was suggested by a couple of viewers. Thanks, guys. What we are going to do is to build the decision tree, a list of all the guessing words we will offer the game, and list of all possible answers the game will give us back, until all possibilities are covered. So what is the best guess to use? How do we decide what is the best way to break down the list of words? There are a few ways to do that. Several of you guys suggested choosing such a word that the size of the maximum group is the smallest, which makes sense as you will need fewer guesses to break it down further. The best possible option here happens to be the word arise, after which the biggest remaining group has 168 words. And this is the smallest possible option. Another way was suggested by 3brown1blue, uh, use information entropy. And to be totally honest, I haven't heard about information entropy before, so... It was very educational for me. Finally, I came up with a few more options. Um, sum of squares, average square, median, and, well, mean, also known as average. I tested all of them. Here's what I can say. The best one was mean. I mean, the average. The smallest average is the way to go. And actually, since the sum of all distributions is always the same, it's kind of equivalent to choosing the word that produces the biggest number of possible answers, the longest list of options. With this approach, I have finally reached 100% winning rate. And the average guess fell down to, drumroll, 3.433. And it was better than that 3B1B got. And then 
3 brown, 1 blue published his part 2, in which the best result was down to 3.41. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. <sighs> so what could I do? Luckily, that 3 brown, 1 blues video had a few ideas I somehow missed. Mainly this one. It would be much easier to pre-calculate all possible outcomes of all possible moves and then just look the result up. Also, I fixed some other inefficiencies in my code and what previously took 4 hours now took about 5 minutes. So great, I could crank up those branching factors to 10, 20, 50 and this is the result that I got. The average is... another drum roll... 3.421. Sorry, it's a bit anticlimactic. I got exactly the same result as three brown, one blue. I mean, the starting word is the same, salay, and the sum of all the guesses is also exactly the same, 7920. It's actually quite interesting that both of us ended up with identical results. It seems to suggest that there's a theoretical limit somewhere for this set of words and we may have found it. Unless you can give it a try yourself and find a better solution. If you do, the source code is in the description for your convenience. Also, if you don't have time to run this code for several hours, but you just want the answers, there is a link to it in a form of convenient Excel sheet. And this is it for this episode. Thank you all again for all your suggestions. It was very helpful. It was quite fun. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Bye.